thanks to yesterday's Woj bomb, we now know who will lead the Clippers on the sidelines next season. Ty Lu has agreed to a five-year deal with the franchise. Lu, of course, spent last season as the lead assistant under Doc Rivers, who is now in Philly. And so Ty, intimately familiar with some of the chemistry issues we saw surface throughout the season and postseason. And we got some additional details of those problems in a report in The Athletic. Teammates being rubbed the wrong way, believing Kawhi was getting preferential treatment, like being able to live in San Diego or the games he took off for load management. So... Kendrick, Kawhi unquestionably the best player on that team. Do you think he was able to be the on-court leader of the Clippers last season with just sort of the chemistry and the issues in the locker room? And do you think that he can be that leader moving forward, and he should be? Well, well, first of all, Rachel, who is complaining about Kawhi Leonard getting special treatment? Look, I played 14 seasons in the, in the NBA, and I played with a lot of Hall of Famers, and all of them got special treatment. It's part of being a franchise player. It's part of getting paid the big bucks. You got to deal with it. Long as they deliver on the court, that's one thing. Second of all, they don't have a leader. The Clippers do not have a leader. Kawhi Leonard is not a guy that, that speaks out vocally and talks about it. He just goes out there and performs and does his job. And if I'm the Clippers, I would really, really consider trying to get at Rajon Rondo. They do mm. need a leader. They need a voice in that locker room that's going to hold guys accountable. It's, so, it's only so much you could do as a coaching staff and as a head coach. You need a guy that's going to hold guys accountable, that's going to say the right things in the locker room, and that's going to lose themselves in the team and lead by example and preach the gospel day in and day out and make sure guys don't have a hidden agenda. So right now, the Clippers do not have a leader, and that's part of their problem. Hmm. I, yeah, I agree with Perk. I mean, it, I, I do think it's tempting to sort of assume that guys will always be who they are, and Kawhi's quiet, and Paul George isn't a leader. Who knows? Maybe this season, maybe the humbling, maybe the embarrassment of what happened to them against Denver, maybe those guys make changes. They're only 29, 30 years old. We shouldn't just assume static personalities. But right now, Perk is right. I think... As great a leader as Kawhi is by example, and several players there have told me, wow, we couldn't believe the work this guy puts in day to day. Just watching him was important for us. Ty Lu is the closest thing to have to a personality now who's going to galvanize the locker room because you know you're going to get to the playoffs, you're going to get punched in the face, and you're going to need someone to have uncomfortable conversations to get people right. They, they, when they got punched in the face by Denver, they just fell flat on the canvas and never got up. So right now it's Ty Lue, but I'm, I'm interested to see how those two guys maybe can grow into it. It's the second year. They really barely played together in the first year, so I'm, I'm not sort of just going to pigeonhole them as what they are now forever. What do you think of Perk's assessment that they should go after Rajon Rondo? Uh, I think, uh, look, I think he, he would help their team. The playoff Rondo is clearly a thing. I, he's probably more likely to go back to the Lakers, and they don't have any cap space really to get him, so we'll see what happens. But uh, certainly a veteran guy who has the respect of Kawhi and Paul George, who is vocal, who will talk in film sessions, who will point out rotations and this and that, anybody like that would be useful for sure. We talk about, like, who's the heart and soul of a team, right? It's not always the best player. Perk, is it a little more complicated on a team where a guy like Patrick Beverly is so outspoken? And in a lot of ways, the season before last represented who the Clippers were, right? That feistiness, the performance that he put on against the Golden State Warriors in the first round of the playoffs that year. Uh, what, what are the sort of complexities in a locker room? And, and by the way, the Clippers are not the only team we've seen this with, where your most vocal player, the most sort of feisty and sort of energy player, is not your best player. Right, and, and look, just and I love Patrick Beverly, and I strongly believe the tenacity that he brings to that team, he gives them swagger, but that don't make him a leader because he never been to the promised land. He never won a championship, so he don't know what it takes to get there. And being a leader, you have to be able to adjust. You have to ha handle everyone differently. And I say this all the time, just because you're the star player doesn't make you the leader of that locker room. I've been on plenty of locker rooms, especially in 2008, where James Posey was our leader. Mm -hmm. He was uh, the guy that was doing majority of the talking. And, and so you live and you learn. And I think Patrick Beverly, especially in the, this past season when he was in the bubble, he learned from his mistakes uh, of walking that fine line of talking noise and actually being a real leader. And I think he will adjust. I love him, but... They need a leader, Rachel. They need a leader in their locker room.
Yeah, I agree with you. I, I love the way Pat Beverly goes about his business. I think maybe not so much on the engaging Damian Lillard again. I wouldn't necessarily advise that. Um, but I do I do want him to <laughs> still be Pat Bev because we are a better league and a more fun league with him being who he is. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.